So I think the takeaway from me from that is do it ASAP, uh, right? And make that trade off. Uh, if I hear you both right, make that trade off early on, uh, as soon as you have a sense that you have some product, um, you know, get a, get someone on board and start selling. So question then is, you know, who? And we started to talk a little bit about that. One question or one chicken and egg or one cycle is, uh, you know, you want to obviously get the best person for the role, but then when you are really early on, uh, there's, there's a certain caliber you can attract. So, so you know, a lot of the top salespeople, they want to join things where they know things already work, right? So um, how do you trade that off? What kind of a person do you get? You know, what level, you know, individual contributor, manager, director, VP level person? What sort of profile are you looking for? Someone who's more hungry, someone who's more experienced? Um, curious to get your thoughts on that. Uh, let me know if you want to. No, go for it. I think um, I like deconstructing problems. You know, I always like to think of, because the blobs scare me, you know, I don't know how to approach it. I don't know. So I have to deconstruct everything. So what is a, a sales leader like? A sales leader has an art and a science. I mean, sales, the process of selling has art and science. Uh, you know, ultimately, the process of selling is not going to change when it comes to how relationship matters. It may not happen in the golf course, like Shashi said. However, they want to know that this company is going to be there. This person is going to be there when it hits the fan. So the relationship the part is important. The scale, the science of scale is also important, right? So there is the art and there's the science. Then there is the operational cadence because it is never too early to understand every single thing that can be measured in the process of selling to figure out what works and what doesn't work, which means there has to be the operational discipline DNA that a sales leader need to have. Now, they don't have to know how to operate salesforce.com. I trust me, not all of them will know how to create a, a, a report or a dashboard in sales. They don't need to die. They can have someone else to do that. However, they need to really, truly respect what data tells them. Not the kind of people who makes a decision and then find some data that justifies that decision, right? So uh, there is that. So the art and the science and the respect for the data, but most Prob uh, importantly, in the fourth one, which is in the early stages of a company, maniacal focus on doing fewer things is how the company is going to succeed and survive. Which means that proximity bias, the, okay, I just lost a deal, so that feature needs to be there. I have a call from this large company, so I need to go sell there. I know this person who had done well for me in the past, so I need to bring them. This market will not work. That market works. This is to do. This partner, the same approach that works for me. That could be a huge problem, which means that you need to find someone who's a constant learner with very few dogmatic views about what works, what doesn't work. Someone with a really open mind of understanding how to understand what's actually happening in the market and adapt, evolve, and build, and customize. So now what happens is you end up with somebody that doesn't exist. Because when you put it all together, it has become something that you cannot find. And that's why, and yeah, uh, now what happens is you end up with thinking, okay, I can't even have to hire one. Now Sudesh is telling me to hire more than one people. Unfortunately, I am. But like he said, if you can figure out how to f find those multi-purpose talent, uh, for example, a product marketing slash SE, uh, to be the sales leader to begin with. As long as they have respect for the process of selling. Because sometimes the challenge with SCs is that they believe that you can sell anything by talking technology. right? They can feel like an amazing demo should get a deal done. Uh, really good salespeople, they make it so simple that you underestimate how hard it is to make that last yard. In football, 99 yards count to nothing. It is the last yard that makes all that difference. And really good salespeople do two things. Number one, what they do in that last yard, you will never know. Number two, they will always give credit to someone else who actually brought them to that. So they will give credit to the CEO who came and made a presentation. They will give credit to that SC who did an amazing demo, the support person, the coder who actually stayed night and made that bug go away so they can get it done. But don't get fooled. Good salespeople make all of that highlight and underneath it all, they will know how to extract money. 
getting that money because they're not here for goodwill. You're going to sell that product and get paid. So that is the portion that you should not underestimate when you're looking for. So that comes as a package. So now what happens is you have someone who can do operational product and SE. Then you find someone who understands how to learn and sell. So that's where you end up. So in our case, in, uh, in Nutanix and in ThoughtSpot, we were able to find sort of a hybrid sales operations uh, slash inside sales. It's kind of a weird thing, but you can find that. Uh, and you find someone who's an SC who understands the product capabilities and limitations, but also respect the process of selling. So those two people together can take the first 10 customers. And after that, marketing has to come in and figure out what worked in those 10 customers and how to do more of it, which is the repeatability around it. So, so I'll, I'll kind of annotate some stories uh, around this, right? So one, I think an interesting point Sudesh mentioned was metrics. One of the things that uh, we did at Demisto, which I think was fantastic, was uh, literally we got a sales ops contractor with the first salesperson, right? And I think it's not about setting up that sales force. Yes, you can hire somebody to set up that sales force, but I think it's it's a very good idea for the founding team or the executive team to go through this introspection of based on our product and our market that we understand, what do we want to measure as success? Is it the length of the sales cycle? Is it the size of the deal? Is it how many months did you take in the POC? And it's very easy for everybody to say is I want the larger ACV and a shorter sales cycle. Of course, everybody wants that. But I think the first task in the first year is to figure out what is the formula that will work for your market, for your product, and can you even hit that, right? Like, uh, what is the ramp model for your salespeople? These are all questions which you don't know the answer when you start selling, but if you don't have the answer after a year of selling, then I think you have a problem, right? Like, if you don't know, you hired six salespeople, but some got productive in the first month, some got productive after the eighth month, is something that you have not figured out before you go to repeatability. So I think my point, reiterating the point is we uh, absolutely did one thing, which is got the sales ops person. You don't uh, need a very senior sales ops, a smart sales ops person who can understand, who can generate reports, who can respond to the CEO or the founder to say, what metrics do you care? And I'm gonna get you those metrics and have the discipline to kind of go through that and pair up with whoever is on the sales side, right? Uh, the right talent because like it says, hey, what are you seeing? Are you seeing the same thing? Um, so I think that's one very important thing. And I think the second thing which I, we did this across disciplines in the company, which was good is maybe early on, you get the person or the skill set that you don't have right now, right? Again, pairing up an SC product market, SC person with a sales ops and inside sales person. Uh, we didn't have anybody who could understand inside sales. Our uh, uh, salesperson was amazingly product-oriented salesperson. We had uh, the sales ops person. So we actually went ahead and got a really good director of SDR because we could totally see that, hey, if the product is, has the promise, which we felt it did, I need to build the pipeline really quick. It will matter on the product, on the space. Sometimes if your deals are million dollar deals and you only have like, I have a friend whose companies, basically he says, hey, I only have 50 customers in the entire world, sells to very large utilities. For that product, guess what? He doesn't need an SDR. He just needs sales guys who work on $5 million deals for a year and get to that. Depends on your fit, but I think important to figure out what skill set do you have and metrics. I think measurement is important. Music